She cheated on my friend and they broke up. I was shocked. I was asking her why she would do that and she said she wanted to have more bedroom action. From there, she became the talk of the cafeteria when she met a man she'd never spoken to before. And within five minutes, she went to his car and got. Then my friend decided to have a drinking party. We were all underage, but it's what you do in college. Well, this was something that would change Jackie forever. What's going on, everybody? We are back with a subscriber email, guys. Um, if you want to send in an email, send it to truestorynation at gmail.com. Here, I'll put it on the screen. That's truestorynation at gmail.com. Um, whether it's a good, funny story, successful story, a story you think someone's going to learn from, and uh, it'll, help, it'll help someone, send those stories in. Or if it's just an enter entertaining story, that's fine, too. Um, and if you want to shout out a channel or channel or anything, I've done that in the past. Uh, you want me to shout out your name if you want, I don't mind. But if you, if you don't put your name in here, I'm going to assume anonymous and you want to remain anonymous. So, uh, let's get into this email. So you guys read the title, the girl who had everything. Hey, True, I thought I'd give you a different perspective. Usually, as you know, women who cheat are fatherless, poor, or have mommy-daddy issues. Well, I'm from an upper-middle-class neighborhood. I've known this woman my whole life. Our parents are friends. This woman, let's call her Jackie, was given everything. Her parents love her. She's allowed to do what she wants, and she's been given every opportunity others would kill for. And yet, Jackie, being the spoiled brat she is, threw everything away to be a 304. Jackie was always sheltered. Her parents gave her an 8 p.m. curfew. Her mom made sure she hung out with good people. She was a dancer from a young age, and honestly, she was good at it. She was allowed to get her permit at 16, but she had to get a job, and she was only allowed to drive to and from her job and school. Her parents now believe this is why she ended up the way she did. I actually kind of hate Jackie because her mom cried thinking that she should have let her do more. Like I said, Jackie is a spoiled brat. When we went to college, a community college, I ended up hanging out with the gamers and the nerds. I dated around a little, but I never dated more than a couple women. I was focused on my studies. However, cafeteria was where everyone, and I mean everyone, hung out. I take some responsibility for what happened as I hooked Jackie up with a friend of mine. Remember, Jackie was never allowed to go out. Well, she told her parents she was in the clubs, but sucked face with this man. Never dated before this either. Well, he took her V card, but she wanted more. She cheated on my friend and they broke up. I was shocked. I was asking her why she would do that and she said she wanted to have more bedroom action. My friend was studying, but they got it in at least once a day in one of their cars. From there, she became the talk of the cafeteria when she met a man she'd never spoken to before. And within five minutes, she went to his car and got finger banged by him. Didn't even know his name. I yelled at her. I said, I said he could have been anyone. This was a community college. After all, he could have been from one of nearby bad cities and taken her and we'd never see her again. She dismissed me. Then my friend decided to have a drinking party. We were all underage, but it's what you do in college. Well, this was something that would change Jackie forever. 
Jackie was not allowed to go to bars, but she was allowed to go to this girl's house, who was also having a 304 phase, but she was much more focused on becoming a teacher. Well, Jackie got drunk, as did she, and they both got it in with the same guy in the next room over. It was loud and uncomfortable, but the girl at least apologized for it. Jackie said she didn't do anything wrong, and she did it five times that night. Jackie was now hooked on alcohol and was drinking whenever she got a chance. But when she was drunk, she became stupid and acted, and acted stupid, laughing, stumbling, falling. And this was the state she was in when she would, would get it in with quite a few men. Keep in mind, we are in New Jersey, right in the butt crack of New York City. It was a very liberal area where if a woman calls our word, it's, an, it's essentially her word and the man will have everything taken from him. I told Jackie she couldn't do that. If she regrets being a 304, oh well. But she was not to say that someone took, took advantage of her and I would 110% be a witness to any man saying she was lying. Thankfully, she never did. But she drank and got it in an alarming rate. Eventually, she was skipping class to get it in and drink, and we had our first intervention when she drove home drunk. She said she wanted to change, but the next night went out and drank again. Oh, you guys are doing that whole, I've been, he I've been hearing around. Shame, blame, and explain the SBE, and that's what you, that's what you guys was doing to her. <laughs> hey, she is who she is, man. Shout out to the guys that, that talk about that. I, I think that's so funny. During all of this, her parents were getting worried about her failing grades and had no idea what she was doing. Eventually, she was told she was not to go out until she got her grades up, except Jackie was able to start sneaking out. She lived on the third floor, but if she quietly went down the two floors on the stairs, she would be directly in front of the door. And her parents were both working at this point. Both she and her sister were going to school. And being that they cared so much about their daughter's educations, they paid for them both to go. Jackie's sister seemed to realize how much of an opportunity this was as she studied her butt off and actually never went out. We invited her to go out with us a couple times, but she'd be in the library typing a paper or doing a project or in a club being an admin. So clearly her parents are wrong about screwing up as one daughter is now going to be in charge of sending people to places of natural disasters across the world and will even be going to help people herself. The other one, not so much. Jackie kept sneaking out. Illegally sneaking into bars via friends who were older, letting her in through the bathroom window or the back door, she got into a few clubs this way as well. She was always going home with someone. When she got her first STD, we figured out she never used protection for any of these men, ever. She had to have had body counts of more than 60 at this point. We had another, interven we had another intervention for her. SBE. <laughs> She said she would be more careful, but when she got but when she got her second STD while she was out clubbing, probably giving the man an STD as well, I called her parents and told them Jackie wasn't home. She got super grounded, no clubs, no car, no fr basic flip phone to communicate with her parents. She wasn't even allowed to drive to work. She got a ride from her parents. This, of course, didn't work, as she kept sneaking out later. But eventually, she used her own money to buy her own car and her own phone that her parents couldn't take away. At this point, Jackie was getting straight D's. Her parents begged her to at least pass school. And as her friend, I would see her sucking face and actually pull her off the man and literally drag her to class. This helped her school performance somewhat. But then, we met Derek. Derek was... Not just someone with a place to go. He lived with his mom, who allowed him to have people over because he got straight A's. But he was a drug dealer. 
Unfortunately, he also indulged in his own supply. <laughs> well, Derek introduced Jackie to pot. Jackie loved pot and still does. He would go to his house every day and smoke, and Derek had a drinking and pot party every day. I was never really into the drinking and party scene, and this was about the time Super Smash Brothers came out, so I was unfortunately more focused on that. Maybe if I had watched Jackie more, I could have prevented what happened next. Jackie was a pothead. She, she and Derek eventually started sleeping together because he would sell her pot in exchange for bedroom action. Jackie was now sleeping with a smaller pool of men, the ones that went to Derek's parties. At this point, her body count had to have been 100 plus. She would drink and smoke pot, but we found out she was taking antidepressants. We had another intervention with her. Saying what she was doing was dangerous. She could be inflicting permanent damage to herself. So she began selling her antidepressants to make some money on the side of working. We didn't figure this out until later. Jackie smoked and drank and met a man at one of Derek's parties she began to date. Well, they went on a date one night and went to a bar. He was tired and left, but she stayed. She usually stayed until closing, and this was a school night, and he cared about his grades. He cheated on him at the bar, and when he found out and was asking why, she said he left her at the bar, and she got bored. So they obviously broke up. And she went back to being a 304. Jackie's 21st. We went to a bar where she drank so much she threw up. She was so drunk she passed out at the bar. When she came to, when she came to, we lost track of her. Somehow she'd gotten a hold of someone and went home with them. We called her parents, who put out a missing persons report, and her phone died. It was two days before she came home. We were all so mad at her. We, de we demanded to know why she thought that was acceptable, but she just said she was an adult. She'd apparently gotten gang banged and, of course, didn't use protection. It's a good thing she was taking birth control or else she would have gotten pregnant for sure. Uh, I think getting pregnant is probably the not the worst thing that could happen to her the way she's acting, just saying. Now that she could legally get into clubs at bars, she went out every night she could. She even quit the job she had for five years and got a new job. Not that it was much of a difference. She was still making minimum wage. She was, she was still barely passing her classes with straight D's. Somehow, she got, she got her associates. It took her four years. But, <laughs> but who am I to judge? I was still in school. But that's because I was taking care of my mother with cancer and grandmother with dementia. I actually ended up dropping out so my sister could go to nursing school full time since if my mother died, she would be the person paying the bills. My mother actually had her uterus and ovaries removed. The fact that she'd gotten her associates was a miracle at this point. But in, but in order to make me come to her graduation party, she stole my 3DS and said if I wanted it back, I would have to go to her party. At her party, I figured out the name of the person that had my 3DS and called the police because Jackie said she was going to sell it for drug money. I got my 3DS back, and that woman had a warrant out for her arrest. At that point, I didn't trust Jackie, and while I hung out with her because of my mutuals, I didn't really hang out with her. Maybe I could have stopped her from meeting this woman, Julia, who everyone said hated. Julia was Jackie, except much worse. Julia had warrants. She had twice her body count. She blatantly broke the law, and her father took her car away as a last ditch of controlling her. She was 23 at this point. Julia convinced Jackie to stay out all night every night, and I do mean every night, and drink. She lost a job from being so hungover and quit another one because she told her she'd be fired for missing another day at work, and she was in a different state drunk. Jackie was still living with her parents, rent-free, drinking and smoking pot. Julia came over one day, and Jackie and her sister got into a sibling's quarrel. 
except Julia physically assaulted Jackie's sister and Jackie's parents got her arrested. To which Julia's father bailed her out because he was spineless and let his daughter do whatever she wanted with no consequences. Jackie left her parents' house because they said Julia wasn't allowed over anymore. From there, it was a downward spiral. Jackie and Julia smoked pot every day and every night. They were party girls, 24 at the time. This continued for four years. Jackie in this time frame went through seven jobs, slept with hundreds of men and women. Not, a, not an exaggeration, a different person every night. Crashed three cars, crashed two apartments, got arrested three times and let Julia take advantage of her. This brings me to our most recent incident. Jackie was supposed to be paying the rent and getting pot with her minimum wage money. She now has herpes and chlamydia and is not getting it treated. They lost their apartment due to a non-payment of rent since they spent their money on alcohol and pot instead of rent. They moved into a motel where Julia thought the motel owner was charging them too much and called the cops, only to get arrested for yet another warrant. Her spineless father once again bailing her out. Jackie and Julia were going to run away to Maryland, but Derek decided to finally let her parents know what was going on. Jackie was admitted to a psych ward, and Julia went back to Spineless Father. Jackie is now out of the ward, living with her parents, rent-free, of course, and is trying to get her old friends back. My friends are all saying she has mental illness and she needs the support of her friends to get through this. Well, I don't buy it. Jackie was given everything in life. She was given every opportunity. Her parents even paid off her debt and got her treatment for her STDs. Jackie might have depression, but she's a spoiled brat, a brat that was given everything and now at 28 is trying to start her life since she spent the past 10 years partying. Jackie might have the others on her side, but I will never accept her back, not forgive her for what she's done and put her parents through. This goes to show you can be the most loving parent on the planet your child can still turn out to be a thought. Wow. Well, yes, yeah, sir. Um, I know quite a few women that had both parents. And I knew some guys that had both parents. Um, I'll say one, one guy. Both parents, great parents. He is not part of society anymore. He is not part of society anymore. He's gone for life. Behind bars. This guy's parents had a real good marriage. I know several girls, several girls that had both parents. <laughs> they didn't end up quite like this girl, but they were wild too. So, yeah, if you guys are thinking that, oh, she's a 304 because she didn't have a daddy or because, no, a lot of people grow up with great parents and they go and do the opposite of what their parents tell them to do. Parenting is tough. Parenting is tough. I, I feel for a lot of people. Parenting is not easy. I really appreciate this email, man. What a story. Uh. Jackie, ugh, what a piece. You guys were trying to, and I, I get it. You guys, you're friends. This is your friend. You guys cared about her. But shout out to the guys to talk about the SBE, shame, blaming, and explaining. You can't shame, you can't shame, blame, and explain. You can't shame, blame, and explain to these 304s. If they want to be 304s, let them be 304s. You can't do much about it, unfortunately. Guys, let me know what you think about this in the comments. I'm going to catch you guys at the next one.